Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Podcast also below in the description. Go subscribe to that as well. We'll be streaming here live on Draft Night. Brought to you by WineAccess.com slash HamJohn. 20% off the best wines. Yep. WineAccess.com slash Ham. 20% off. Go do yourself a favor and place an order. Jason La 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 can for it, John. Who wrote this today on Twitter. Very strong expectation among GMs and throughout the industry that the 49ers will make a major effort to move Jimmy Garoppolo before or during the draft. Timing isn't great with five QBs about to go in the first round, but Jimmy G's future there now seen as bleak. Or as we would have said a month or two months or three months ago, seen as bleak. Not now seen as bleak. Seen as bleak. We've been talking about this for a long time. I thought yesterday of all the questions, and there it was a well-operated uh, questions coming from the the local media. They were well-constructed questions, yes. They didn't give much. I don't think of any, and there might have been one thing we'll dive into here in a minute. To me, by far, the number one thing that stuck out, and it was a great question I from Biederman. I forget who asked the question specifically. Is Jimmy Garoppolo going to be on the roster at the end of the weekend? I mean, that is a that's a pretty black and white question that does put him on the spot a little bit. Like he he kept like dodging questions I'm about sorry, the what players. Was the, I'm sorry, what could you repeat? I forgot. The yeah, first then part. he repeated oh. it, and when he said the alive question, to me, it's not arguable anymore. Jimmy is a goner. Jimmy's been a goner from the moment they made the trade. Jimmy is done. Jimmy was done the moment he sat in the suite, ate popcorn, and took fake notes. In the last month of the season. You could argue it, it he was, was done before that. He was done by the time he got hurt and couldn't come back. Or didn't Yeah, it, it was a disaster. And I, I do think Kyle putting him on the spot like that was, you kind of have to say something stupid like that, even though it does, like there's validity to what he's saying. Like literally any human could die at any moment from anything. And who knows? It's the textbook. Uh, I don't want to answer this question. Answer though. I mean, don't you think that by far of all the things he said yesterday, that was like the most concrete of like, whoa, something is like this guy's in trouble, like his spot. Yeah. I mean, look, if depending on who they draft, then we'll go back and analyze what was said. We'll go, oh, that was a hint or that was a hint. But yes, that was the most direct. But, but I'd say his status also is more dependent on other teams who they draft. Right. That, that is part of. Jimmy's yeah, but, but I do. This goes. This if goes the Patriots into, get Mac Jones, like he ain't going to the Patriots. Right. Right, but but part of this is, are the Niners at a point where they're still trying to get value, or are they just going to be offloading an asset because they need to offload the asset? And I think that's where they are. Like, values, in other words, are you holding on to Jimmy if you can't get a second-round pick for him? Like, that's the problem they're having, is people know, wait a second, how many people are out there are really even shopping for Jimmy Garoppolo? Why would I give you a second-round pick? Like, I at this point, do you expect them to get a second-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo? Uh, I think, I mean, I would do that. I'd drive Jimmy to the airport if Feel I was like a win. second pick right now. I, I think you would do that, that today. Wouldn't you do that today for a yes. second round pick? Even I, if be, it was I bet they've been trying to, they would have done it. You know, I don't know if they would have done it a month ago if they got a second round pick, but I would have once they had this third pick. Yeah, I. that's, yeah, I, I mean, I'll be a little surprised for sure. Now, but I, I do think I'm not going to be surprised. I expect him to go. So could the compensation be like a third and a fifth? To where? I mean, Denver, New England are the most logical destinations, I, I think. Houston would probably be maybe a sleeper out there with Casario and Deshaun Watson's season. Probably not going to happen, right? Yeah, but if you're Houston, are you, you're trading them a second. You're not trading them a second. You might not even. No, no, no. Yeah, that's. So I, I, you just go around the league. Like, where would he truly go? Right? Could Joe Judge bring him in? But, I mean, they were kind of all in on Daniel Jones. I mean, that doesn't make much sense. <laughs> I mean, if the depending on who the Jets took, if they just thought like, but you wouldn't trade at yeah. I just why don't would you do that? Trade, if you think Mike Lafleur? No, who's trade? Who's trading assets? Green Bay just I, to like motivate Aaron. Um, I, 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 New Orleans. Uh, yeah, had a great I mean, game I, against it, New Orleans. What do they, they think of Jameis? They, they don't have twenty million dollars in cap space. Um, if they were like eighty over before they started cutting and trading people. Yeah, then guess what? I have news for you. We're uh, Chicago. Well, uh, so you'd have, Washington. I mean, I think Foles is on the hook for like 15, 16, Dalton 10, and then you have Jimmy. I mean, that's a $50 million, $40 million quarterback room. I, send, I, to me, you, to me the logical destination, I think the team we're watching, 
is New England. And if they get a quarterback, Jimmy's probably done. If they don't, I think Jimmy's going there. How about this? Jimmy for Foles. If the Niners like, we, no one's offering us better than a fourth, let's get a really good backup here who can be a good mentor. I don't hate that. They did just sign Sudfeld. I'm not saying Foles is better than Sudfeld, but yeah, I don't, I don't hate that. So uh, I, I, but the, but but this whole exercise is evidence that they don't have any leverage in this situation. No, their, their leverage is going to be teams missing out on quarterbacks, right? If the Bears and the Patriots don't have quarterbacks and they're kind of not feeling great about their room, I mean the Patriots don't feel great about their room. The Bears clearly do not, beside on social media. So you just have to hope that none of these guys fall or those teams trade up, and then you take advantage of it. But if you don't, then you might just kind of be stuck with them. That, like, if there is not an op anywhere for him to go, it might kind of make some sense to keep him and just see let the dust settle where it may. What's he going to do? Bitch and moan? He's You're got, saying, he's like, got even if you have fields, yeah. you keep them, and then somebody's quarterback gets hurt weak. You're keeping them in case somebody else – your yeah, guy but gets just hurt let or... it go. Like I just think Jimmy's Jimmy's in a situation. No one gives a flying fuck about his feelings. No one would care about him pouting. Like he would have no leverage but to be the ultimate pro and try to beat him out and just hold his spot. Yeah, the the argument against it is not pouting. It's more about are you putting Fields in an awkward spot? And the answer to that might be yeah. Well, that's the NFL. You got to deal with awkward spots. You're our. Don't worry. You're our guy. It shouldn't be that awkward for you, Fields. But or there, Mac there's or a Trey. balance of like. I mean, one of the reasons the Eagles, I think, felt like they had to get rid of Carson was because they put him on a podium from day one, and it got too big, and then it got out of control. So there's True. a balance. Like I would say, Kyle, Kyle's not a big put a guy on a podium guy, <laughs> even though the trade put does that to him. But I, I think the way you could put just like. Again, Jimmy is gone if there's a destination, but the destinations could just disappear. If the destinations disappear, could you keep them and just see what plays out? Yes. I wouldn't do that. I would just get rid of them no matter what because I do not want my rookie quarterback in that situation. I still think you can hold the rookie quarterback to tough standards without Jimmy being around. Yeah, I mean— It, from, just, it just creates an extra story that's unneeded. An extra story, and I think it, it creates— it just some ah, uh, it just makes it weird from a leadership perspective, right? You want your, you want this guy. This is what happened with Hertz and Carson Wentz. Part of it was there was like this weird leadership battle, right? The dif the difference though there was like Carson was never going to go anywhere last year. Like Jimmy has kind of known his spot is uh, in pencil now, right? Yeah. Carson never thought his spot was in pencil, so that that was way more awkward. I just think this is awkward just from. Just from your basic young quarterback, veteran guy who's not like Tua Fitzpatrick, not awkward. Fitzpatrick's 38. This is, we've talked about this before. He's 28 years old, 29 years old. Like Jimmy is not 37, right? He's in kind of this weird spot because he's not some established good player, but he's had a moment, but he makes a lot of money, but he's been the starting quarterback. You know, it's just, it, it's actually very awkward. I think what makes the hypothetical difficult is not knowing the offers, right? Because there's, it's if you're getting offered a second buy, if you're getting offered a third buy, if you're getting offered a fifth, you're like, okay, I'm getting offered a fifth. I, I could keep Jimmy around, and maybe week maybe week one somebody gets some some quarterback gets hurt, and all of a sudden Jimmy's worth a second again or a third again. I don't know. Like at what price are the Niners willing to lead, to move on from Garoppolo just for the sake of moving on from Garoppolo? I think you could justify it pretty simply where it's just like whatever the best you can get right now, just that is the best for our team. So if it caught, get a fourth right now, fucking go. Right. I, I, I agree with you on that. picking that. Yeah. The question is, are they, we'll it's see. impossible to know right now until these teams draft. Yeah. And what, what you like, if you're the them, what do you need here? What helps you? It helps you. If New England, New England not getting not quarterback. Get quarterback because even if they don't trade for Jimmy, if there's somebody else out there that wants Jimmy, you at least can use New England against them. Yes. But sounds like uh, Bill wants to buy back at uh, a, a twenty percent of what he sold. I don't blame him. I, I would either. never offer a second round pick in a million years, especially unless Jimmy would take an immediate pay cut to like five million dollars and incentivize like fifteen of it. But again, right? it's it's there are two factors here: his value just to you, how good is he right now, how healthy is he in the future, and a lack of demand. So it's a double whammy. Yeah, it's not an ideal situation. I mean, but even if there ideal... was demand, I don't know. 
that you'd get a, I don't think you'd get a first round pick for him anyway. If there was no time. chance coming so, off 10 games. So we're talking about if there's demand, the best you'd get a second. So there's no way you're getting a second. Now would they no got demand. a first, would they got a first round pick for him after the Super Bowl year? I mean, the bears, the bears are pretty desperate. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, they like you could argue new England was better now yeah. than he was when new England traded him to you. Yeah. Would new England have given last year's 22nd pick to get Jimmy back after the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be probably. But that's a distant memory, John. Those are the old <laughs> days. Big time. Those are the old days.